Hello. Nobody's here except me. Welcome to Friday Night Doodles. Um, I think I'm just going to doodle without any music for a while. And if I get bored, I might add music. I don't know. I've been getting kind of annoyed with music lately. Anyway. <laughs> okay, let's get my light set up. Do, 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 my sketchbook. And today I'm using a... <laughs> Paper Mate Flare Medium. It's kind of a marker. It came with like colored markers. So we're gonna do felt tip marker today. I don't know what I'm gonna draw and that is the point. Um, what am I gonna start with? Uh, maybe a sock because I just did my laundry and I am missing a sock. I don't know where my socks go. I look for them everywhere. They're probably in that black hole that they found in the middle of our galaxy. That's like the sinkhole. I think we're all, you know, if humans lived thousands of years into the future um, and our universe starts to just entropy, that's where we're all going, to the black hole. Black hole sun. Oh, I used to really like Chris Cornell from Soundgarden or Audio Slave, whichever band that was. We had this like cool skeleton t-shirt before Sid from Toy Story made it cool. I saw that video for Black Hole Sun when I was like eight years old and I thought it was the coolest fucking thing I had ever seen and Black Hole Sun is like one of my top favorite songs if not the favorite song of all time and uh, markers are good for coloring in like this and that's what I was saying about my last um, drawing video is that when you doodle, you're literally just making like a coloring book for yourself. So I'm just drawing a portrait of Chris Cornell. This ring is really hurting my finger. What if I put it on this one? Oh, I probably won't be able to get it off. Oh, shit. My knuckles too fire. I'll just put it... Oh, would you marry me? Okay. Um, I don't know what kind of pants Chris was wearing. So. Just weird noise my cat made. I don't know what's wrong with her today. She just sleeps all day. And, um, does he play a guitar? He must. So it's going to be really low guitar. And you know what? I'm going to do something fun. I've got the good shit here. Mm, that smells like childhood. You know, my mom has her own business and she had an office in our house. And I would go after hours into her office and sniff the white out. And then they came up with those like white out strips and my fun time was over. And then my mom liked doing crafts with me and she got the good shit glue, like the Elmer's the stuff that comes in a brown jar, holy shit, that stuff is powerful. And uh, yeah, I'd sniff that too. I'm a glue sniffer. <laughs> I'm sorry, mommy, I'm a glue sniffer. Do, do, do. Now, what did Chris's face look like? He had a little, um, what the fuck is that called? Goatee. It was a goatee, but it wasn't connected. It was like 
um, a separate goatee like this. A two-piece. <laughs> I don't know. And did he have, like, really thick eyebrows? Yeah, probably. And he had, like, shaggy hair. I thought he was the coolest man I'd ever seen. <laughs> but he's dead now, unfortunately. That was really tragic. I don't know if he was part of the 27 Club, but what a weird thing, hey? All these, like, musicians and whatever dying at 27. Let's draw some weird numbers. Weird and wonderful numbers. 27, but the 7's fucked. 27 Club. Alright, what's another weird number? 13? That's a strange number. Let's do whatever this was. 13. And I'm gonna make it 3D. Whoa! 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm gonna make it like different. Make it all different. Oh, I almost forgot what I was just gonna draw. What in God's name was this? You might know where I'm going with this. Uh, what is it? This? This S thing. And some people would like cut it off like this. Some people would like wrap it around. What is this thing? Huh? All right, what's another weird number? Halloween's almost here. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, I know a good one. Um. I'm not gonna say it, but it is one of the coolest numbers around. Yeah, 420 blaze it. <laughs> there is a weed dispensary in my city, <laughs> and uh, it's called Sweat. Like this. And I was driving by with my parents. And my dad's like, what's sweat? And I'm like, smoke weed every day. I was like, how do you know that? Because <laughs> I live in the world, dad. I live in the world where there are many stoners. Who are also skateboarders. Just, it, it's like on brand. People kind of fall into these niche things, but it's like everything's been done. Everybody is their own brand, really. You have to sell yourself on your clout and your coolness. Or clout. Clout. <laughs> um, let's do a cool little skateboard. I've always wanted to do art for a skateboard deck, is that what it's called? But I'm not a skater, so I don't have the cred, right? Like this. I don't know what I'm doing. This is fun though. <laughs> uh, this marker isn't holding up. Very good, a cred. There, that's my brand, TM. Sorry, you can't see. Um, I'll just do like clouds, a rainbow thing, maybe with a heart. Oh, skateboard. All right, where were we? 27, 420, 13. Oh, baby. Ooh, how are we gonna do this one? It's gotta be 
sultry. Okay, it's looking a bit 70s, which is good. So I'm gonna just kind of do the opposite of that. Ooh, baby. 69, wine and dine. If you want a 69, you got a wine and dine. Right? I am not currently dating. I just feel like adding an additional person into my intimate life is not going to go well right now. I like really enjoy just being by myself most of the time. Like solitude is really nice because I am my favorite person. That didn't always used to be the case. I always had to be around people because I was very insecure and I got my, derived my happiness from other people. Which, you have to find happiness for yourself. It's nice to be around people, but eventually people just kind of disappoint you or they're not what you need them to be in your life. Like you really only have yourself in this life. From birth to death. What is my cat doing? Um, like imagine if your whole family died tomorrow. Who would you have? Some friends? They might help you out in a pinch, but... Like, really, you only have yourself to rely on at the end of the day. But of course, it takes a village to raise a child, and we are essentially social apes that need other people, and that's lovely. Love is lovely, but sometimes it's hard. So really loving yourself is the best thing that you can do in this life. Because when you love yourself, Either other people will feed off that and love you too, and those are the right people in your life, or it'll be the opposite, where people you thought were your friends are jealous of you, um, they don't support you, they see you as a threat or something, and those people aren't really your friends. They're just people you know, and society is hard to live in. I want to live in some, like, utopia, you know? Let's write the word utopia. Because that's the ideal. But most of us are living in a dystopia. Okay, that doesn't look like a T, idiot. And I am my own critic, my own harshest critic here because I know I can do better but sometimes I just don't care <laughs> like look at that that looks like shit all right now what okay let's go back to black hole sun here he has some like clouds behind him black hole sun what's a black hole sun look like let's, let's focus on this black hole sun Obviously, it needs eyes because it's a sentient being. It's A black hole is like the sink drain of our galaxy. The Milky Way. And according to that picture, there was like a ring of light or something. I don't know. But it's a sun. Black hole is sun. Radiating heat. I don't know why we're alive. Why can't anyone explain this yet? Like, we've invented so many things. What's my favorite invention? That's a hard, that's too hard. Uh, wash away, the black hole sun is gonna wash away the rain. Does that mean it's going to rain its own rain? 
And these clouds are upset. See, everything is sentient. Everything is life. When life gives you lemons. I want to get better at my typography. I feel like I have only a couple go-to fonts. You know? Kind of boring. I'm going to draw lemon now. And this marker is good because it's like really got that um, coloring book thickness. I don't know. Should I just start drawing furries? Is that what everyone likes? <laughs> I don't know. And then like the fox girl has hair. Does she have a fox face or a human face? I don't know. The furries thing scares me. But I want to get in on this. Furry rule 34, you know. People are into that. People identify as cats and dogs now. Like, what is this? Th I know it, why people are attracted to these human-animal hybrids. It's Disney. It's all Disney's fault. Let's see if I can remember how to... It's his fault. With the Robin Hood. What, is, what other one had, like, the animal? It's already got ears. I don't know. Is this... Girl fox fuckable? <laughs> I am disturbed. I am disturbed by some of the things in this world. Furries are a little bit innate, if that's the word. Sure, she'll have high heels. That's what the fucking internet wants. feel gross drawing this. <clears throat> I've taken a wild turn and I can never... Oh, and you always have to be, have a big fucking fluffy tail. Um, I guess I'll put little shorts on her. One of those really tiny bikinis. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Is that hot? Hot or not? I need more viewers, so I'm just going to draw boobs and dicks. Boobs. And these are going to be, like, just for medical reasons to demonstrate um like how to breastfeed your infant he's got three hairs and he is hungry he's gonna be wrapped up like that baby in eraser head ew that thing was so ugly the mom how did that baby look it had like weird head like this and we're like <coughs> did it have a human nose i can't remember that film that art film was very disturbing but see it looked more like a little dinosaur it's so wet and greasy Maybe it had hair. Here's the eraser head guy. Do you think he would be into furries? Who's the director? David Lynch. Um, he was wearing like a bow a tie. A suit. He had a tie and a suit on. 
You kind of look like shocked. Eh. I rest her head. Hit. <laughs> what a strange movie. box see where i went with that you just skip over to the next thing and you forget that you drew furries there are children outside my window i wonder if it's the same kids from the other day there was like three of them and they were all curb stomping this like broken office chair um it was a little bit violent and i'm worried for our youth in this so-called utopia star wars lunchbox check it out um needs a little more judge judge and then we go in and we feel the little Holes. Let's draw a bong. I don't care about the sensors. I'm going to draw drugs and tits and dongs until the cows come home. Choo 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 choo. Well, I promised dongs. Let's make a disgusting one right here. Well, you can tell I haven't seen a penis in a while because, like, look at this. <laughs> well, is that uncircumcised? I've literally never seen an uncircumcised penis in my intimate life. It's always circumcised. What is going on with people who do that? Ugh. Like, ugh. Um... Let's draw another one, but it'll be like a different thing. See, like I know theoretically what an uncircumcised penis looks like. As you like pull back the sheath, there's like a pull tab here. P <laughs> and um I guess we'll get some scrotes in here. Ugh. See, women, all of our stuff is tucked up inside nice and neat. I mean, we have leakage, which is gross. But at least it's all in a nice little tight package. <laughs> Ugh. The world is just, everything is trying to fornicate. All the trees right now with the pollen. Oh my god, it's like a plant sex fest. And you gotta be careful with pre-cum. If, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Doodly doing. If you are having unprotected sex, which you should not do. No way, Jose. Um... And you think that you're going to be able to pull out and not get your girl pregos? Um, I have something to tell you. It's called pre-cum. <laughs> Here it is. This will get you into trouble. And depending on where you live in the world, um, you and your girl are not going to be able to get an abortion. Because <laughs> we live even further back from the Middle Ages. I was reading about the Middle Ages and many, many women were shamans, midwives, herbalists, and they figured out all of these herbs that will cause an abortion. And it was common practice, like even in ancient, ancient Egypt. Um, and then the witch hunt, is hunt, the witch hunt started because they were trying to oppress these women who were causing abortions. And obviously it was this Catholic church that was like, um, we need more Catholic people so that the priests can like put their dicks in their mouths. 
and that kind of disgusting shit. And so in the late Middle Ages, you had to go to school and get a license or a certificate or some kind of like valid education to say that you were a healthcare worker and you were licensed. And obviously at that time, women were not allowed to go to school. No school for women. And so it became illegal for these women to deal out, you know, abortifacients which cause an abortion. Like, literally, ginger. If you eat ginger and you're pregnant, you can terminate a pregnancy. Maybe. Don't listen to me. I'm just a witch. So yeah, all these women were burned as heretics and witches, even though they were using natural natural methods to cure all kinds of ills and um, a lot of that wisdom was lost unfortunately because of the fucking catholic church and they're still in our way in america like america's so backwards they don't have health care and the world's just going to shit. Nobody cares. Anyway. Women aren't really taken seriously in healthcare situations now anyways. Oh, ow. I think there's something wrong in my ovaries. I feel a lot of pain in that area. Oh, you're fine. You just have to fart. Oh, really? And then a year later, they die because they have endometriosis or something. (sighs) Anyway, I don't like these legs that I fucking put on this witch. Mm! I've ruined it. I've ruined it. This is a terrible drawing. (laughs) But it's fine. Now I'm just really sad because the world is so fucked up and you don't really see that until you're an adult, like in your 30s. And you're just like, I have to wake up every day and work every day at a place that sucks. And I can barely afford to like exist. Ugh. Do I know Roman numerals? 10, 11, 12. Look at me go. 1, 2, 3. Chuka, chuka, choo. I want to live a life where I never have to wake up to an alarm again. Like that Radiohead song. No alarms and no surprises. No alarms and no surprises. I wonder if I could draw Tom York. I drew him once. A long time ago. He's got like weird dobby ears. <laughs> um, I don't know, like weird lips. Kind of an upturned nose. And stubble. And he's got like one eye is even more closed like that. What's that mean? That doesn't look like Tom York. (laughs) Oh dear. It's hard to draw people from memory. Looks more like Eminem. I don't know. No alarms and no surprises. So I took 10 years of music and that's what I just drew. The most incorrect thing. It was like this. Beautiful art. Ooh, I just want to like make it really dark. 
Make it a fat note. Fat. How do you play a fat note? Um, maybe we'll do some more tits. Let me use like pokey ones. Like Marilyn Monroe. Do, do, do. That whole thing with Kim Kardashian wearing Marilyn Monroe's dress to the Met Gala. It's like just chaos. Just pure chaos. They shouldn't have let her wear it in the first place. Like this is an archival museum object. Like if I wanted to wear some uh, suit of armor from the 1300s to the Met Gala... Um, they wouldn't let me. Like, why didn't, why couldn't she just wear the replica the whole time? Like, we get it. Yeah. But she was wearing, like, a museum. It's like if I wore the ruby red slippers from, uh, The Wizard of Oz. They wouldn't let me wear those. I wonder how much Kim Kardashian paid to wear that dress. <sighs> Jeez, that fucking family. And like, they went to Disneyland. Disney! And they got like VIP treatment. It was just them and their bodyguards on the teacup machine. And I get it. Like, they're so fucking famous that they're like a security risk. And to just let them go on by themselves get it over with, you know, the kids in the actual lineup have to wait another extra half an hour or 20 minutes. I don't know how long the teacup ride is. Um, just because of who they are. And that's what life is. It's just these rich people get away with fucking everything. And yeah, they have to pay a lot of money, but... It's obscene. It's obscene how some people have so much goddamn money. But as a child, like, I don't know. If I went to Disneyland and I was eight years old and I sort of knew who the Kardashians were. Like, say my mom was really into watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I'd be like, hey, isn't that those people on that TV show you watch? It's like, Yeah. I'm like, well, how come they just got to skip the line and go on? My mom would be like, oh, because they're really rich and important and famous and blah, blah, blah. They probably paid a lot of money to just get on. And I'd be like, well, that's not fair. And then I'd be like, yeah, life's not fair, huh? Life's not fair. Life's not fair. And I remember learning that lesson very early on not because I went to Disneyland <laughs> but I went to Disneyland when I was 14 years old um I wanted to go when I was like a child seven years old my parents said we'll have to wait because we can't afford just yet to go down to California da, da, da. I was like, okay, and I was obsessed with Mickey Mouse and Disney, and I wanted to be Walt Disney. I'm like, I want to make my own characters and have my own theme park. <laughs> like, literally, I wanted to be him. But that's not how the world works, huh? So, I waited and waited, and then my baby sister was born, and then by the time she was six... I was like 14. Finally we went. And I had a blast. Like I loved it. But it was still. There was like a little bit of achingness inside me. Like I wanted to go when I was a kid. How come my sister gets to have all the. Cost She's wearing all these costumes. And just like having a blast. I'm like I'm a fucking bitter 14 year old. <laughs> so it took a lot for me to switch gears. And just have a fucking blast and my sister always wanted like a toy from every gift shop that we went through and if you've ever been to Disneyland you know that there's a gift shop for every single ride 
And she'd be like, I, I wanted this for my whole life. I saw a millipede today. I was cleaning my backyard. And all the like old pots of plants and stuff. There was this millipede in there. So my sister would be like, I've wanted it for my whole life. Like You're six years old. You've barely been on this planet. And you didn't even know this toy existed when we back at home. How, how could you have wanted it your whole life? And it would be some like stupid spinny toy wand thing. Like it would have like shit coming out of it. And the lights would go do 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 do, and it would spin around and it would make noise. It was essentially like, how am I gonna say it? Dildo, <laughs> like a dildo toy. And she just wanted so much stuff. And like you, mom and dad are on, <laughs> mom and dad are on a budget. You can't just get everything. And that's when I went to Disneyland. They had churros. That was the first time I'd ever had a churro. Holy shit balls. Magical. That was the most magical thing in the happiest place on earth. Oh, let's draw a mustache. A Walt Disney mustache. Is it called... What is this mustache called? Like, everyone knows it as the Hitler stash, but it was popular before that. And like, it's very British. What is this mustache called? I'd like to know. I'm interested in men's facial hair. And guys don't have sideburns anymore, hey? I had a thing for sideburns. Like, oof. When I was a teenager, that was like so attractive to me. And now it's not really anymore. Would I date a guy with a Hitler stash? I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's a hard one. Hitler really ruined that for men. And this is a swastika, but it's the good one. It's the Buddhist one. So I guess a check plus. Hmm, this is pretty fun. Just talking like as as I'm drawing. It's like double stream of consciousness right? with the physical and the ethereal. What is voice? Is voice ethereal? Ethereal. Um, what's going on with Elon Musk, hey? And hook. Oh, and then the thing about when I went to Disneyland, I went in the year 2001, October 2001, catch my drift. Um, we literally flew to Anaheim three weeks after September 11th happened, and my parents were not phased at all. They were like, nah. We've had this booked for months. We're not going to cancel. We can't cancel because we won't get our money back. So they literally were like, it was a money thing. And they're like, we're gone. And um, I learned later that Disneyland is on a terrorist watch list because it's the happiest place on earth. It's literally a, a testament to like American the American dream and capitalism and whatever um so we were there and there were no planes flying overhead like it was dead air there were no lines no lines we went on the Indiana Jones ride like four times in a row just Bam, 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 bam. And the just the lineup for that ride, it took like a minute of running 
through the lineup to get to the actual ride. Like, it was so long. So, if you want to go to Disneyland, just wait for another terrorist attack. A. Eh? I can't believe it. Like, I'm the same age now that my parents were at the time. And if 9-11 happened now and I had two children, I'd be like, I'm not taking you on an airplane. Who knows? I would be scared. But my parents just were not phased at all. They were like, that's a New York thing. It'll never happen in California. They're not going to do another attack like a month later. <laughs> like they, they rationalized it away. And we were at the airports and at the airports, the American airport and the security had fucking like AK 47s. Is that how you draw an AK 47? I don't know. And they were in like military gear. So I was like, this is pretty serious, this 9 11 thing, hey? My parents were like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen to us. I don't, I don't get it. My parents sometimes is just, I grew up in another time. Well, I'm pretty much done here. Um, I mean, I could fit some other shit in here. Let's draw the Twin Towers. Never forget, right? I'll never forget. I had no idea what was going on because I was at school all day. And then when I got home, I mean, my mom was glued to the TV. And I saw that fireball go off. And I'm just like, holy shit. Is this real life? It's the North Tower. Is this real life? And I hadn't even really thought about New York before that. I didn't really know much about it. I knew it was like a big city. But I didn't know the significance of these towers. I was like, oh, those were pretty big buildings. I mean, they are pretty high in the sky. It's easy to see how an airplane might, you know. <laughs> Kidding, obviously. But I was 14 and it was just like, blew my mind that something like this could happen, right? I didn't know the socio-political economic implications of this terrorist attack. Like before, I didn't know what a terrorist was before that. So yeah, 9-11, never forget. The day that changed everyone's lives. Well, I'm going to end it on a bummer note. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to sign this. Gotta do that. That's Kalina signing off. Never forget. <laughs>